check it out. Everybody, Super Derek's fan here for weekly update number 49 on this Friday. Very sunny Friday, I might add. That's why I'm wearing the sunglasses, because without these, I'd be squinting like an idiot the whole time I was filming this video, because there's tons of snow on the ground, plus it's super sunny, so it's just blindness, blindness everywhere. So, first thing I want to say is huge thanks to all of you that turned out for the live stream that I did this past Monday. That was amazing. I loved it. Went for almost five hours. Had tons of fun chatting with you guys about cars and answering your questions, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, many thanks to all of you that uh, showed up for that and a lot of you said you want to see more of them so I think I'm gonna start doing it the first Monday of every month uh, doing one and I might do one here and there for special occasions as well Yeah, so uh, probably gonna start doing them, you know, once a month at least, and that'll be fun, I think. I really enjoyed it. So, what's new with the BRZ? Well, I'm still battling these condensation issues. If you've been following me since I bought this car, I've had condensation issues from day one. The day I picked the car up, the one passenger taillight had a condensation issue. There's a little bit of condensation in it. They said, oh, it should clear up. And uh, since then, in the past you know, year and a half, almost two years now that I've owned this car, uh, that taillight's been replaced once. The driver's side one was resealed. And then just today, they replaced the driver's side one again because I actually didn't show you guys, but my the, t the condensation in the driver's side taillight had gotten so bad that there was a pool of water in the bottom of it. And now that it's been so cold, it was frozen. So I had like an ice cube in the bottom of my taillight. It was pretty bad actually, because it would fog up and it was almost like un like unable to be like viewed. It was kind of blocking the brake light there and pretty bad. So they uh, said they had to replace the whole taillight because obviously the other one was like flooded. And um, they said this one has a slightly different gasket design, so it should be okay. So they're telling me how this new gasket design is uh, better and it shouldn't allow for any condensation. And the car has been parked for about two hours since I got home from the dealership, and there's condensation in it already. Yep, more condensation. So that's the bane of this car's existence. I think. Uh, Someone on the FT86 Club forums posted this like way to fix it. I think they figured out what the real cause of the condensation is that Subaru and the service people can't seem to figure out. Pretty sure a forum member has figured it out and I'm gonna be giving that fix a try here soon once the weather gets half decent. Um, and uh, I'll show you guys how I'm doing this fix. It's basically just this like putty stuff that you put around the trunk jam where the tail light meets the trunk jam. I think that's where all the water is seeping through is it's just being channeled through the trunk jam. It's just going straight into the tail light essentially. That seal is just awful and the design's awful. So if you just seal that whole thing off in the trunk jam, I think it should be okay. So I'm gonna do that eventually. Um, but you know, in the meantime, it, I mean, it's very minor condensation. Again, as you can see, it's just a little bit, but it's still just so annoying. Um, <laughs> so yeah, tail light condensation issues continue. So yeah, that's it for all the updates on the car this week, guys. So I'll send it back to me at the news desk for this week's news. Right, so for this week's news, the first thing is the 2015 Subaru Legacy that debuted at the Chicago Auto Show, which has been going on this week. And uh, I'm pretty disappointed, especially, once again, they debuted an amazing Legacy concept a few months ago. Obviously, the people that design Subarus, the designers, if they were just given free reign to do whatever they wanted, Subaru would have some of the most beautiful cars on the road, but then you get the bean counters and the engineers say, oh no, that might offend some people, so they turn it down and now the new 2015 Legacy looks about as exciting as a city bus. The concept version looked amazing, it was pretty production ready, pretty safe, it kind of looked a little bit like a Buick Regal uh, GS and it looked really good, really sharp. Um, and all they had to do was put a normal interior in it and some normal side mirrors instead of the crazy little camera mirrors they always put on concept cars. Other than that, it was fine. It was, I mean, yes, the roof line was a little more aggressive. If you absolutely had to use this body, but at least have the nose and the rear end look like the concept car, this just looks so vanilla, so bland, and uh, I don't know. I just, I, if I was a designer working for Subaru, I'd be banging my head against the wall until it bled because of how beautiful they have so much potential with so many beautiful concept cars, and they all just 
just totally just disappoint. I don't know. I, I love Subaru. That's why I'm upset because they could make some of the most beautiful cars on the road, yet they refuse to. They refuse to, you know, take chances. They want to be safe and conservative, and so this is what we get, is bland-looking cars. Whenever you have Ford Fusions and all these other spectacular-looking cars that are coming out left and right, Subaru just wants to appeal to the bland, ordinary crowd with a sedate-looking car that barely gets your pulse going. It's just, I don't know, pretty frustrated with uh, the legacy, but I'm going to move on. Uh, the next thing is Volvo has debuted the new 345 horsepower S60 and V60 Polestar versions. And they're finished in these bright blue colors, very exciting looking. Subaru, you might want to take a few notes off of Volvo. This car looks spectacular, by the way. And they're doing a performance version. That's another thing. Sorry, I'm going to go back to the legacy thing one more time. They also got rid of the manual transmissions. There's no GT version, there's no performance version, there's the 3.6R flat 6, but uh, that's not really that much of a performance model. Um, you know, so anyway, sorry. Uh, so this Volvo has a 3-liter turbocharged 6-cylinder, 345 horsepower, 369 foot-pounds of torque. I mean, this thing is a very, very quick car. They're only making um, a few of these cars. I think they said 120 are coming to the U.S., so... Uh, not a whole lot, sadly, but that is a spectacular car. I'm just glad that Volvo's making it. Next is Toyota has gotten the idea that they should probably start making exciting cars, and so they're doing this TRD Pro series, and, I mean, I'm admiring the fact that they want to do exciting cars, but they should have a little more originality and creativity. They have these TRD Pro series, which are basically hopped-up trucks, and they all look like Ford Raptors. Um, they obviously are just ripping off the Ford Raptor idea. They even have the same burnt orange launch color, the same blacked out grill with the Toyota script. It's just a very basic Toyota spelling, just like the Fords and the you know F-150 Raptors. Um, that just shows a total lack of creativity. Honestly, I'd be pretty upset if I was Ford. I, would pro I don't know if they have some kind of copyright on the way they designed the Raptor, but that is a blatant ripoff. I'm sorry. Toyota, you should have put your own spin on it somehow. But just copying the Raptor is pretty lame. But hey, at least they're trying to make something exciting. Speaking of Toyota, though, they there's a report out this week that they have a nearly $40 billion cash reserve from all their profits. And uh, people are saying, what are they, they should do something with this money instead of just having it laying around, which is a very good point. They're saying they're going to pay it out in dividends and do some other things. But what I think they should do, you have $40 billion laying around. First, make the Toyota FT1 exactly like the concept. Put a sweet motor in it. Sell it for a reasonable amount of money. If you have $40 billion laying around, you could sell the FT1 at a loss if you want, just to boost your brand image. Maybe, you know, maybe the car costs $120 grand to make. Price it at 80 or 90, lose 30 grand on each car, but only sell a thousand of them. You're not going to lose that much money in the grand scheme of things, and you would have an amazing car that's extremely competitive. That's the first way you spend 40 billion dollars. Obviously, I mean that's a drop in the bucket. Designing and engineering the whole FT1, I highly doubt. I don't know how much all those engineering costs are, but I doubt it's going to be more than a couple billion uh, at the very most. So. Um, first off, make the FT1. Second, they should improve the FT86, you know, the Toyota. Since Subaru doesn't want to improve on the BRZ and stuff like that, Toyota, go and run with the GT86. Make the sedan version with the hybrid all-wheel drive turbo version. Do all that crazy stuff for the sedan, for the coupe, keep it rear-wheel drive, you know, do the more powerful engine or the hybrid carrier system, whatever you want to do with that car, just enhance the GT86. That would be awesome. And then just keep doing other stuff. Resurrect the MR2, you know, and if you're if the FT1 is going to be a supercar, then bring back a true Supra, price it around 60 grand or something, and just have a whole awesome portfolio of sports cars. That's a darn good way to spend 40 billion dollars, I think. And I think they'd still have some cash laying around after that. So Toyota, I mean, I don't know if anyone from Toyota's watching, but that is how I would recommend spending 40 billion dollars if you're going to do it in one way or another. Next is that Volkswagen has debuted a GRC Beetle. It's a rally car. It's uh, sponsored by Rockstar Energy Drinks here, and it's got more than 560 horsepower from a turbocharged engine. Uh, I think it's a four-cylinder. I mean, it's a nuts. I mean, rally car, and uh, it's all-wheel drive as well. And I just gotta say. I know a lot of people still think the Beetle's a girly car, even though the newer version looks a lot more manlier to me. If Volkswagen made an all-wheel drive Beetle that had gobs of power, I'm talking like over 300 horsepower, and it was all-wheel drive, 
I would highly consider driving it. I actually like the way the Beatles look. I like the vintage retro idea of them as well. And so if they had one that was an insane all-wheel drive turbocharged monster, that would be a very interesting production car. Food for thought, Volkswagen. Next is that, you know, General Motors loves doing tie-ins with different movies. You've seen them in, you know, the Transformers movies and things like that. And they have a new Corvette C7 in uh, the new Captain America Winter Soldier movie that's coming out here this spring. And there's going to be this blacked-out Corvette that's driven by Black Widow, which is Scarlett Johansson. And if the C7 wasn't already compelling enough as an amazing sports car, I keep seeing review after review of how amazing the C7 is. I want to drive one so badly. But if you needed an even more compelling reason to buy one, after you see Scarlett Johansson driving one, uh, yeah, that's going to make me want one even more. <laughs> Pretty excited for that scene in the movie. Hope there's a pretty sweet driving scene with her in that car. That is going to be sweet. So, uh, yeah, not can't think of a better combo than that. Next is that uh, Ford has been doing some development of the new GT350 Mustang, which will be the high-performance version. And since we already know what the 2015 Mustang looks like, they've started dropping some of the camo off. They still have the front end covered up because it's going to have a bulging hood that has a scoop and things. So there's been reports that the GT350 would be all naturally aspirated this time, no forced induction. But the scoop, people are thinking that maybe it will have some kind of forced induction. People are thinking it'll maybe be a supercharged version of the 5.0 motor. Uh, no one really knows still. It's all up in the air. Uh, you can't really tell a whole lot by the camo pics except that it has a much more defined hood. Uh, and that's about it. But um, good to see that they're working on that. I don't know if that... Some people are thinking that that's going to be what they're going to debut for the true Mustang 50th anniversary here in April. Uh, not sure if that's what they're planning or what, but um, that would be pretty cool. Next is that Ferrari is planning on unveiling the revised California here on February 12th in a few days. And um, they're saying that it's going to probably have the same... It's going to be forced induction, which is, you know first time in a while that Ferrari's done that and so this is going to have they're saying the same motor out of the Maserati Quattroporte which is a twin turbo V8 they're saying 523 horsepower 523 foot-pounds of torque and uh, they're saying that it's gonna you know it's gonna be the same car it'll still have the retractable roof and all that kind of stuff um, but they say that this one might look a little bit more like the F12 Berlinetta which is a good idea in my mind I love the way the F12 looks so that'll be interesting to see whenever that car debuts Another thing, uh, this was about a week old, this news, but uh, another little mini rant, I'll try and keep it short. BMW launched the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe, um, which sounds kind of silly to me because the 4 Series was supposed to be a coupe version of the 3 Series, which I, f I originally didn't think was a good idea anyway to have this new separate uh, you know, brand line, but you know, Audi has the A5, so BMW wants to say, oh, well, we'll do that too, and so now they have the 4 Series. And now they have the 4 Series Grand Coupe. I mean, this isn't a new idea. They have the 6 Series Grand Coupe that already came out, and I just, I don't know. Okay, so it's like an inch longer and an inch wider than a, than a 3 Series. And it looks a little bit better than a 3 Series, a little bit more aggressive, but why not just call it the 3 Series and decide on its design? I don't know. I mean, you have the 2, the 3, the 4, the 5, the 6, the 7, and you have the i8. So, I mean, literally just, I think they're flooding their market with way too many variants of the cars. I mean... How much different can a 4 Series Grand Coupe be from a 3 Series? I mean, who's going to say, yes, I want to go for the more boring looking 3 Series over the 4 Series Grand Coupe? I mean, yes, you want to have an entry level 4, four door, so I guess that's why they have the 3 Series still, and the 4 Series is going to be more of a grander car for those people that can't afford a 5 Series or want something a little more aggressive. I don't know. I just, I think it's way too many cars, um, personally, but, so that's, uh, the Grand Coupe. And the last bit of news is that Saline's announced that they're going to be uh, modifying the Tesla Model S, and it's going to be uh, the first tuner EV kind of thing. And they're saying they want to boost power to supercar levels. I mean, I drove, I've drove, I've driven a Tesla Model S already once before, and it had tons of power. Just the way it delivers the torque is just insane because there's no relenting. It's just constant torque that just seems to go on for infinity. So that's a really cool idea that they're going to even make it even faster because that was a really fast feeling car to me. Um, and they're saying that it's going to have a revolutionary design that's all their own. So I don't know, I mean it's a four-door sedan but apparently they're going to, I don't know if they're just going to throw a body kit on it like they do with the Mustangs or if this is going to really look pretty radical. I'm not sure. Details are very sparse, but they said that uh, they're hoping to have it out on the road pretty soon, so excited to see more of that. But yeah, that's it for all the news this week, guys, so I'll send it back to me in the car. Alright, so I'll leave you guys the nice little acceleration here.